Now then, Nemson here, welcome back to VisoCraft. We're finishing off a few jobs right now. I've been pottering around, doing bits and pieces, doing a bit of mining, get some stuff together. Uh, not really, not really achieved a great deal of uh, stuff that's worth recording on video. And just playing the game, just playing the game, that's what you do, you play the game. Playing a bit of Minecraft on the VisoCraft server and enjoying a bit of vanilla. It's fun. Look at this. Hey, keeping up the supplies. Uh, but my wheat supplies running a bit short, so I thought I'd give the farm a bit of attention. Uh, it's sitting here waiting to be finished. Uh, this side over here looks okay. We've got the crops growing nicely with all the lighting in the right places. These sides need their lighting and all that sort of stuff installed. And I also need something of water dispensers. I've gathered together enough dispensers to do the whole row. Uh, and I'm just working out the redstone behind here. Uh, the redstone is pretty simple. The uh, Each dispenser has a redstone feed going into it. Using repeaters to split the feed so that the redstone wire doesn't uh, touch. Uh, apart from where I want it to. And then I'll just give it a bit of a flick. And then I'll cycle it out, and the bucket of water will eject water out onto here. Um, my problem really is that at the bottom here, there's a bit of a gathering point. So, I'm thinking of having another flush mechanism down here somewhere to flush them. Flush them away once I've put them in there. And then flick another button to turn it off again, once I've seen that it's all gone down. The thing about a timer on this would be that um, I'd have to work out the timings for all of the wheat from the top to travel down the water all the way down to the bottom until it was secure. Whereas if I just stand here, push a button, and then it flows, I can see, right, everything's down, push the button. Now, that button may have to operate another water dispenser down here somewhere that pushes the the items left and right maybe something like that anyway something like that so I don't have to keep collecting them but then I can come down and just open the chest and grab the seeds so I can come down here open the chest grab the seeds and then go and replant the whole lot uh, it's all manual farming still but on large scale like this it gives you a chance to uh, stock up once or twice uh, one big farm once or twice. I've talked about that before. Uh, I have changed my mind about over there being another wheat crop. I think that's going to be a potato farm. So it's going to be uh, wheat, carrots and potatoes. Uh, for the sheep farm, potatoes. But, well, needs to be. Needs to be. Needs must. So uh, I'm doing fairly simple simple redstone right now. Um, some repeaters made. Uh, got some more blocks there. Okay. Uh, fairly simple redstone, nothing major about it, so I'm just going to get on and make some more of these. Um, let's do... Oh, I could do with some more, couldn't I? We've got some more smooth stone. Let's just put these in for now. So I've got to work out the layout for where the buttons are going to go and then where the stairs are going to go so that it fits all in nicely to this area afterwards and I thought I'd uh, do a bit of recording while I'm doing this stage so that you, you guys that maybe don't know basic redstones will uh, get the idea and we'll get this uh, rocking and rolling I'm also a dispenser short there right so first off try and make it so that uh, you've got redstone repeater redstone repeater and try and make it so the minimum repeaters are used now this one has one extra than the others by the looks of it which is not not a great thing but it'll be okay it'll be fine I'll put all the redstone in round here there we go and the same on this side now I've got plenty of repeaters left which should I'll put them like that so that I've got a redstone first that should save on the numbers of and redstone last that saves on the numbers of but that end one over there just has that extra row and I'm out of redstone here as well I've got some redstone in the chest haven't I 
Yep. Okay. And I don't think I need any more repeaters just yet. So, VisoCraft is running smoothly still. People are on. People are about and doing lots of things. Um, finished some really big projects, and now I'm just working on some of these little smaller projects to see if I can figure things out. Uh, just get things doing so that I can get some supplies together. I've been doing a lot of mining and working out the perimeter and the mine shaft and all that. And now I'm just uh, just tidying up. I'm starting to feel like I'm running a bit low on some food stuffs. So that's what I'm doing now. So that block there is going to be concealed by that. That block there is going to be concealed by that. I'm going to have stairs going up, so I need to conceal the lot in there. Let's see. So let's take that one out and that one out. I make those the redstone switches. So if I've got, uh, I'll need a block underneath each of these like this that'll receive a redstone signal when a button's pressed. I think that'll do it. I'll just have wheat this side because I'm going to use a lot more wheat than I am the other two. Um, Dark brown stained clay, there we go. So we'll conceal that up there, conceal that up there, and I'm gonna need to get some more need to get some more stone to get some more buttons. I've been doing a lot of uh running around this place. And it's dying to make me feel like uh it's all coming together nicely. We've got quite a few projects over here that I still haven't touched on, but I'm trying to keep up with getting them all done bit by bit and uh, I've still got Peddy's uh, riddle challenge to finish off as well at some point um, I just don't have time right now to get on with it I catch up here and there but to get through Peddy's challenge you need a good couple of hours to get through it because you've got to redo places that you've done before uh -huh, there we go you've got to keep going back on yourself and redoing stuff which is not not easy when you've not got enough time to do it. XP lag, thank you. Uh, the perimeter fence has started building out. I've got it all the way down there now. I've got quite a ways with the perimeter fence and I've started building that one there. I need a load of slime though. I need to go and find some slime, which was a problem with the uh, building the end farm as well. We needed, uh, we needed slime junks and loads of slime. And I've got some slime chunks down here, around here, but I haven't built a slime farm yet. Whoa! Hello, Deirdre. How are you doing? Wow! What's she doing here? Oh well, that must be uh, a little dark there. I thought, I thought this was fairly well lit, really. Maybe I was mistaken, and there's a a dark spot down there, or maybe the dark spot's the other side, and they spawned in in this side. I don't know. I don't know how it worked. Anyway, back on to the redstone derping. Let's see if I can get this to work. I'm no peddy. I don't do redstone quite as much, but I at least understand the basics, I suppose. So, uh, let's remove this again for a second. So, when I push that button, that redstone signal takes. Okay. That's what we want. We want that redstone to take hold when that happens. So the same would be true over here. That redstone signal comes from there. Now we need to take the redstone signal from this block, which probably means I need those repeaters. Oh, creepers. Well, there's a turn up for the books. Where did you come from, creepy? I am not very well lit at all. And there's more mobs around here today than there normally is. Much more than normal. I don't know where that came from. I must have destroyed a torch somewhere around here when I was uh, setting up. Uh, oh, Echo's going to go and try the challenge some more. Good for him. Good for him. Give it a go, Echo. Give it a go. Right, so we'll have this here and we'll have a redstone repeater pulling the signal out. So when the button is pressed, that receives the power. There we go. And then this could simply just have a boink, boink around there. So 
Yep. Nice and easy. Okay, that works. So, pop that back down there. The same on the other side for that one. And there we go. Basic, basic redstone hidden away. Easy peasy. Like that. Oh, and now it's thundering as well. Awesome. Awesome weather. Okay, so that's those two sides done. I just need another dispenser for that. And this one over here. We'll take this button off here. We'll do the same thing about here, I guess. Yep, just about there. Put that there. And put these here. Stick a repeater, pull it out. And a couple of bits of redstone. There we go. A nice and easy bit of redstone in. Just just a nice bit of simple stuff to get on with. Just to just to deal with in my own time. Just to have a bit of fun with. Ah, turn off. There you go. <laughs> Not too much derping going on with that redstone. That's nice and simple. Uh, and just a simple button press. So, carrots and potatoes, I'll go over to that side and press the buttons. And wheat, which I'll probably be using the most. Uh, one button over this side. I suppose I could link them all up together. But that's just not going to happen. Um, the other thing I want to do is figure out a way to come downstairs into this basement area. And at the moment, I don't think I have anything. Uh, how about we open this up a bit here for a downstairs and bring the stairs down here into the place yeah I've got some stairs on me let's try that out so we'll bring it like this yeah that'll do and then we're on the right level here yeah and I've got it in just enough space to get through then as well. That'll do. So we get some hardened clay. And I think the floor's made of hardened clay around here. So, yeah, get rid of these. I'll put the hardened clay in just here. Ah, that's going to be a problem getting around to that side from this side. Hmm. Well, I suppose I can always just make another little entrance around there. Or I can make this opened out a bit more like that. Yeah, that'll work. So we'll put this here like this. So this is now the internals. The platform. Let's put a torch up on the wall for now. And we'll put back the blocks that we take from here to make this still the function the same way. Potentially put some chests in there, just, just just somewhere, just for now. That'll do. Uh oh, creeper again. I'm getting a lot of mobs. It's a busy night. Okay. So I definitely need more torch power down here, that's for sure. How did he spawn with the light sources so close? Has something changed? Has Mojang changed something? I don't get it if they have. I didn't get that update. And this one we can take out from here. And put the floor in underneath. Yep. Um, <clears throat> and then the only way down is on this side. That's fair enough. Yeah, I can do that. Because I don't come down here very often. Once it's set, it's set and ready to roll. Uh, the other thing is switching the water off at the bottom. What am I going to do about getting the water down here to uh, turn water on and off? Or shall I just make a load of hoppers that collect everything and drag things across? I think the hoppers will probably be more reliable and less redstone, just more materials. I did do a lot of mining, so I've got a lot of uh, iron around. So I might be able to make a fair few to at least do one side and then do a bit more mining to do the other side. Yeah, that'll work. And then we'll work on some of the lighting issues that I'm going to have around the place. Yep, so let's see. Let's get some more of this hardened clay. Never short of clay. Never short of bare clay, that's for sure. Um, we need to go under here. So I may as well block this whole section off here. Uh, like that. 
and that means I may as well do that as well. Fill it in. Less spawning spaces. Less air blocks for the spawns. I like to fill everything in me. I don't know why. I don't know why exactly. I do know why. Because I don't like uh, creepers creeping up on me. I don't like creepers be creeping on me whenever I'm doing something. Right, so that's that side and that side done for the water. I'm going to need a load of buckets as well. Uh, so, shall I make a load of buckets first and then make the... Yeah. I was thinking making the uh, hoppers first, actually. So, down here, we've got a hopper this side and a hopper that side. Do I only want one hopper one side? I guess... I'm not really that fussed, am I? Not really that fussed. We go one, two, three, four, five. Mm, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten hoppers. Ten hoppers I need for this section. Well, I guess that's okay. I guess that's not too bad. Let's make eight. Let's make ten. We get ten hoppers. There we go. And that's just less than a stack. So that's not too bad. We can live with that, can't we? We can live with that. I did want something else down here, but that'll do. So we'll just take out the sand from down here quickly enough. And make this whole little level here hoppers. So yeah, there. There, 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 that's the centre. There, 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 that's the centre. So we'll be one short, we'll go, we'll go that way on that one. Okay, need a bit of dirt. And I need another load of buckets, so... Let's make some buckets, get a dirt block on the go. Make some buckets, get some water. And uh, we're nearly done. So I'm just going to finish this section off, um, get some water in these buckets from the supplies, uh, and then I will be back with you in just a moment, and we'll get the lighting fitted in. Alrighty then, so the first section's done. I'll probably do the other ones off camera, but this one is done, so it should just work nicely like this. Flow 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 they take a little bit of time to get out of that first block and every time it drops down it's going to slowly push them out i don't know that there's any easy way to get rid of that i don't know but each time they come down and like i say about the timer if i put a timer on it to try and time it then the timer may find that there's the odd piece that gets stuck somewhere and it doesn't come down properly and doesn't go into the hoppers properly but this now all flows down just straight into hoppers and that's it. Oh, I've got a piece stuck there. This glass idea. Maybe I need to do full full glass instead of panes of glass. Because I did have a bit there that's fallen over, went too fast and fell over. That's not so great. And some seeds there. Yeah, I might have to use full blocks of glass there to stop them from going into that. Hmm. These little things that you find when you're doing something, it's all perfect in theory, but then something happens, something goes wrong. Uh, let's see now. There's all my wood. Yep. There we go. Um, I heard uh, Betsy talking the other day in her video about... Um, about making the wood that Mojang may one day make wood so that they become different colours for different types of wood. So, for instance, now I'm about to make a load of sticks. And these sticks come from dark oak woods. And she was saying about how it would be maybe cool in the future or something cool in the future to see that these would then be dark oak sticks and then make dark oak fences. I don't know if Mojang will ever do that. I don't know if they will ever do that. But it's a nice idea. I like the idea of it. Let's see. Three in. Gap of three. So what was it? There. And 
there, so it's three gaps either side of it made the perfect lighting. Okay. So we're going to go three gaps there, and we're going to put it's on this row, yeah. One, two, three. Yep. And then three gaps there, and three, two, three. There we go. Right, and then on the next level down, they will be in the same place, just on the next, the next uh, colour, which will be just there. Yep, and then on this one as well. It just keeps the lighting just right to make sure that you've got all of these grow, because these little crops here don't grow when the light levels are too low. Uh, I don't believe that the light levels are too low for mobs to spawn. I think these are about right, okay, for mobs spawning to stop that happening. And it's also, it's farmland, and I'm not sure if they can spawn on farmland at all, to be honest. It's a long time since I've read up on those vin vanilla mechanics about mobs spawning on farmland. It might be still true that they spawn on farmland, I don't know. But, to take no chances, and to make sure the crops grow properly, we're going to put a load of pumpkin lights in. So I've got my pumpkins, I can do that in here. So I'm going to need, uh, what is it, eight? So, sixteen altogether. Okay. Uh, put the torches in. There we go. Grab those. And I'm going to need three per... So... Uh, four, 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 Forty-eight. 48 48 of these that's 20 off a stack wow uh, these trapdoors they would be dark oak track doors according to that I think that's a good idea I think it's nice after playing with um, uh, modded minecraft and seeing all of the the possibilities for things in there I think it's a cool idea to have the wood types change from place to place I think Betsy's got a good idea there. Oh, this one. I remember now. I need to stack them up. So, let's get some dirt. There we go. And... One, two, three. That one. That one. Okay. Maybe I got that wrong. Oh, no, I didn't. I got that right. Let's do that. Then place the pumpkin down. And then get rid of the dirt. And then it's hanging in the right place. And put the trapdoors on around the sides. And on the back. Well, that'll do the same. So okay. And the same here. We need to basically have it... Basically have it just there. And then pop the pumpkin on there. And get rid of these. And i just got to do that for all of this farm now. And then get some more hoppers down there and some more buckets in here. A little bit more iron farming and the like. That's all I need to do. Uh, but the place is now taking shape. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to leave this in a moment so that you guys don't have to sit through the whole process. You can see what I'm doing. You guess what it is yet. You can see what I'm doing, and uh, it should all work the same as that crop field eventually. And just give me a nice healthy harvest once in a while when I need it. So I'm going to go off now and go and have a look at another area that I want to think about developing. We've talked about it before, about doing a bit of a, um, a Hunger Games map for the server to come and play on. And I know that the main one, the like the... The the one that the community want to share really needs to be on a mushroom biome, so that no mobs will spawn in the biome while thing uh, while we're playing. So it's all all about the players killing each other rather than surviving against the mobs, because it's not a UHC. It's the idea is it's Hunger Games, which means that uh, the players will be the only people left in the world, as it were. And uh, I want to have a look at, scope out an area or two and show you guys what sort of sizes and things I'm thinking of for it. So, this is 
pretty much how it's going to look. Not too bad, I think. Not too bad. And that should grow plenty of carrots and all that. I'll just do the next row. Do the same over this side. Get some more iron for hoppers and some more buckets. And then the farming will be mass production. Which should be awesome. Awesome. Uh, I think I might still do the full row of torches up there. Just because. I think that looks pretty good, actually. I think having all that lighting in here looks good. Right. So, I'm going to meet you over at uh, site number one. Potential Hunger Games site number one. Alright then. So, my ideas so far... Right, and these are all subject to change because I don't know necessarily how it's going to lay out. Is uh, I've got my farm just outside of the mess of biome, just over there. <laughs> you see the see the chat. Blue Echo was pricked to death. He's just lost his way in the maze again. Uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so I was thinking that that area by my back wall there, uh, it sort of leads on to Savannah all the way around the outside there. And if I put a wall up there, that stops my base from there. I can also have it so that people could have a sort of a spawning arrangement around here. And then head off into the Mesa. And the Mesa biome would be like the Hunger Games environment. So everyone would get a, a start off from the centre there. And then rush off into the Mesa biome in various ways. It's quite a large location. And there's a few things that I want to build in this location uh, that may work. I don't get around yet. Oh, might even move the horses to start off with. Get. Come on. Over there. There you go. Uh, but just down this way, it leads into a bit of an ocean. So I'm not expecting it to travel too much further around there. We shall see whether that works. Uh, but I've got an ocean sort of biome type over the, here. And there's two things. Two things, right? Uh, one, I want to build in the Mesa biome, but I need a theme to build to, because I don't need a base in the Mesa biome as such. So, the idea of having a Hunger Games scenario set up in my Mesa biome over here would give us locations like this to build something awesome in. And I'm thinking of a, a Wild West kind of thing, and travelling on top of the Mesa biome up here. I want to make it so that it's as inhospitable as possible up here. So we'll have we'll have it so that it's not lit. So in daytime you can travel on the surface. But when you're traveling on the surface, everybody else can see you. Because it's all fairly flat. And I'll flatten a few bits more off as well. So the best way to travel in the Hunger Games will be to travel through the riverways and things like that. And what I'm thinking is combining that with the idea that I've got a clay shop at spawn. And I need to keep a constant supply of clay coming to spawn for people to buy. Uh, I could ho start hollowing out the Mesa. Start cutting away inside it and make um, like a, a Wild West gold mine sort of ideal. So uh, there'd be lots of tunnels going through the Mesa biome. Uh, all lit and sort of set out like a, a mine shafts and all that. So the Hunger Games would be more in the mine shafts as opposed to uh, on the surface. So normally, you see, I've seen Hunger Games where you're in a city. Um, an old, uh, well, say an old city. Uh, a city based in post-apocalyptic style where the buildings are all ruins and they've got bits and pieces all over. Well, I'm thinking of having lots of little mining camps and things around here. So instead of going up into the buildings, I'm going down into the Mesa and having tunnel systems in the Mesa. As well as that, one of the ideas for restocking chests that we have for the main Hunger Games, which will be the community server-based project, uh, was to have hopper minecarts going around and refilling the chests that can be found hidden around locations. So having actual minecart shafts and ma actual minecart areas could be cool in the fact that I'm combining several things at once. I get to build in a certain style. I get to build close by my base where I've got all my resources so I can just come out and build. Uh, if people come and see my base they'll start over at the spawn sort of site 
just over the wall there and then head off out this way um, maybe I'll build some sort of observation post wall up here somewhere as well up to that maybe and then take the the whole survival hunger games over this way a lot more but I'm gonna do like um, rickety bridges going across rivers that run snaking around it over the canyon uh, I may dry a bit of the canyon out and get rid of the water so it's an actual death valley type canyon build some bits and pieces in there um, but I want to try and make it so that most of the players will find the best way to survive is to stay underground so we'll have lots of uh, in tunnel fighting uh, hunting around the old mine shafts finding little uh, miners bases finding equipment and things and food supplies and stashes in the gold mines inside the mesa I'm not planning on going down below sea level I'm gonna keep the mesa so it's literally between where I'm standing now and sea level I can hollow any areas out I want and turn them into mine shafts and then on the externals I'm gonna build some little um, Wild West villages type things more of a the entrance to the mine has a camp on it so everybody will be able to go and find mine shafts and all the mine shafts should interlink and things like that um, are quite an undertaking but while I'm mining out the mesa biome for stock from a shop for the clay I may as well be putting that to a good use and have some sort of idea to how I want to set it all up well that's the uh, that's like the next big project I want to be working on the next big project and it's uh, gonna be a steady long-winded project it's not gonna be uh, a short and sweet big project oh come on I thought I made that jump then let's see can I make a jump over here nope let's try it back again before the mobs start coming out nope ah oh, come on come on make a jump make a jump make it make a jump oh, I didn't I failed the jumps let's get up here then instead let's go around let's just walk around it's fine hi right, guys so that's the that's where we're going with the VisoCraft server series from now uh, unless any other community projects come up in the meantime uh, I plan on turning the Mesa biome into one great big Hunger Games Wild West gold mine scenario for all the other guys to come and join in so we're gonna start making plans for that I reckon resource wise it should be fairly cheap to do a Hunger Games like that um, and I've also got to finish off some of my farms and things like that around here as well so it means that I can base myself still in this area but you get to start seeing some builds in the mess of biomes so tune in next episode where we'll get started on at least something new <laughs> and I will uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next time on VisoCraft